Uh, good day, it's Paul Jarrett, the orthopedic surgeon. I was wanting to give a talk uh, on video uh, that I gave recently this year in 2009 to a general practitioner group about rotator cuff tear, tears and the instance in the general population and treatment of tears because uh, it is a complex subject. So one question would be, are rotator cuff tears always symptomatic or can you get a uh, tears in the general population causing no problems that don't necessarily require any treatment and in which patients uh, with rotator cuff tears uh, is treatment going to be beneficial. So I've got a number of papers looking at in asymptomatic patients, people just, uh, in fact they're not patients, they're asymptomatic symptomatic people out in the community, what is the likelihood that they have a rotator cuff tear that's full thickness that they're unaware of? And it's quite age related, as you can see in this paper, uh, paper patients over the eight year of eight, age of 80, more than half of them had a significant full thickness tear where it's less common in younger patients. This patient, it wasn't quite as dramatic, so in 15% of people, 70 to 79, but still a reasonable number of uh, people with tears that they're unaware of and not necessarily causing any problems for the future either. So the reason this information is important is if you see someone and they have an ultrasound demonstrating a cuff tear, is the ultrasound findings relevant? Is it responsible for the symptoms? If it is, is it uh, what's the best form of treatment? <coughs> So when we're seeing patients in the clinic, we want to make a diagnosis. What is wrong with their shoulder? Because that's going to help us decide well, what would happen if we left it alone. And is there an alternative to leaving it alone? It's a better alternative. And in terms of making a diagnosis, we need to take a history and examine the patient. Often we'll want to take x-rays and an ultrasound and then with time try and make a diagnosis. And as I've mentioned, uh, we will often see cuff tears and patients who are no, having no problems from the cuff tear, so we have to be careful that that is relevant or not. And likewise, there's something called impingement, which is very commonly reported on ultrasounds, even when the patient doesn't have any clinical impingement. So most shoulder surgeons would consider impingement a clinical diagnosis rather than a radiological one. So someone who's coming to see their general practitioner with shoulder pain, what could be wrong with, of course, lots of different things, but they could have a cuff tear or could have been that they had a smaller cuff tear which enlarged, but it may have been that they've simply sprained their shoulder or they do have impingement or they've got arthritis or a frozen shoulder or problems from their neck or other areas. And so these are the sorts of things we really try and work out from. If they did have a rotator cuff tear that was the cause of the symptoms, what would be uh, the treatment? Well, the treatment could consist of doing nothing. It may be that doing nothing is no better than leaving it alone, uh, than, than doing treatment, or that with time they're going to improve just as much with, as with anything else. <coughs> Physiotherapy, often very useful. Injections has a limited role in rotator cuff repairs, as does putting a telescope in and tidying things up. And some patients are going to benefit from having a tendon tear repaired. And this image on the right is uh, showing a tear that's been repaired in the blue and there's some uh, uh, white and black sutures in there uh, holding things in place. So if someone has a rotator cuff tear and that seems to be causing their problems, uh, what's the relevance? Well, it's worth knowing, was there a recent injury or is this something that's a degenerative, more likely to be degenerative problems? How much symptoms are getting? <coughs> if someone has very little symptoms, is it worth undertaking any treatment? Or if they have uh, very good function, um, that's clearly demanding of less treatment than someone who's lost a lot of function. Younger patients, uh, they've got a long time to live and sometimes more functional demands. So that's going to change what one thinks of treatment and what does a patient want from their treatment. So <coughs> as a surgeon or as a doctor, we have to take all these things into account in determining what would be the best uh, treatment. This was a paper from 2014 comparing patients who had rotator cuff tears uh, with uh, and treating with physiotherapy or treating uh, with uh, surgery. And as you can see in the image on the left, the results are not that dissimilar. The treatment on the right is uh, people having secondary tendon repair doing less well. My take on this would be that uh, if you were to have a tendon tear and you started physiotherapy, and people are responding well. They're probably in that group who are not likely to require surgery in, in 
likely to do well. Whereas within six to 12 weeks, if they don't appear to be doing so well, maybe it makes sense to consider an operation reasonably primarily to keep them in a good outcome group. And of the, in that, uh, in studies, it's shown that a lot of people will continue to improve all the way up to two years. So physiotherapy for some rotator cuff tears, especially more elderly people, often will be extremely uh, good and comparable to operative intervention. And operative intervention is a big deal. It takes a long time to recover from. Injections, there doesn't seem to be a great role um, <coughs> But sometimes early with physiotherapy it can be worth considering, but it does impair tendon healing for a few months following an injection. So if I'm seeing someone and it looks like they might require tendon repair, I'm loath to consider an injection in case it impedes healing. Uh, in terms of just simply putting a telescope in and tidying things up, uh, there are a number of studies suggesting this is a uh, not uh, universally a good idea and, and therefore uh, it would have to be considered very carefully for an individual. So certainly there are some patients who will respond extremely well from rotator cuff repair. So younger patients, patients with significant symptoms and or functional loss who the symptoms seem attributable to the tendon tear, that uh, it would be worth considering. But it is a long recovery and uh, all we're doing as surgeons is placing the tendon where we're wanting it to heal and hoping it's going to heal. The healing is not guaranteed, but uh, in the patients we choose, generally speaking, uh, they do very well. So... From what I suggested to the GPs is patients who are young, it's best that they see a surgeon. Uh, elderly patients, uh, physiotherapy, and I apologize about the age definition, but pe people who are over 65, it often it's worth considering physiotherapy before referring to see a surgeon. And the one exception for that is uh, people who are older, who've had an injury, were fine before and has a very significant loss of function with a massive tear. Often it's worth re referring those patients to see a surgeon very uh, urgently. So thank you for listening to this talk. Um, you're more than welcome to come to the clinic to talk about rotator cuff or shoulder problems. And uh, um, thank you for listening. Take care.